Aitza Ovaliat, Antha Kultsiamat, Tanitsen Layaksen, Snanemo Stolo, Heichkalapwangan, Anasquimalt Mastimo, Aitzatka. So in my very, very broken Hokaminam, I've said my name is Kultsiamat. My English name is Rabina Thomas. I said that I'm from Lyaxon through marriage to my partner of over 25 years, automatically transferred to his band because of the Indian Act, but my roots through my grandparents, through my grandmother and grandfather are Nanaimo and Chilliwack. And I thank the Lekwungen and Esquimalt people for allowing us to live, learn and play in their beautiful territory, and thank you all for this opportunity. So today I will speak about storytelling um, and some of what I've learned over the years about storytelling and the importance of storytelling. I'll start off with a really small um, story about Wild Woman and traditionally years ago most nations on Vancouver Island anyways I don't know about um, throughout territories throughout Canada or North America we had had stories about Wild Woman. And Wild Woman was a story that was taught to us when we were really young. And in my language, Toktolos Lehene is Wild Woman. And, and we were taught that at dusk, Wild Woman would come out. And she would have a basket on her back, a cedar basket. And she would fly around. She could fly. Um, she was um, very smelly, not well kept, um, and, and scary. She was big. She was hairy. She was scary. And she would fly around at dusk. And she would be looking for children or animals or anything that was wandering around by themselves. And she would throw them in her basket. She'd fly them back to where she lived in the bushes. And, and she would um, have these children and creatures and whatever she had for dinner. And, and so we were taught from a really young age that you needed to know, pay attention to your surroundings. We were taught when we left our communities, you paid attention to where you were going, you paid attention to landmarks, you paid attention that you didn't fall and hurt yourself so that you could get back at dusk, you listened um, for in the wild for the things that were going on and, and we knew that the owls would start to hoot at night and so you would listen for the owls and you would listen for other things. You would pay attention to the sun and the stars and, and everything around you so that you could make it home before dark and before Totolos Lehene came out. Now I think that we would think about this story and we would think that it's very scary and that, you know, that might not be the story that we would tell children. But the thing about it, it was very purposeful. Storytelling has always been very purposeful and so in this story, as the elders would tell it, they would tell it with a lot more passion than I just did. They would make sounds, they would enact images, um, they would talk really specifically about the territory that you lived in, so if you lived on the water, they would be talking about paying attention, was it high tide, was it low tide, um, they would be asking you to pay attention to the clouds, all of those things, and, and it was purposeful and it provided teachings, and so for us, in, in the traditional times, in the old times, what was the most fear for our parents was our environment, the rugged terrain, we didn't have street lights, we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have any of that. And so that was most what mattered is that we taught our children how to be safe in their environment. Now, of course, if we were to tell those stories, we would tell them quite differently. Um, we would be teaching our children how to be safe um, in, in the environment as it is, in the city. How to make sure that, you know, they weren't in places where, where they could... Um, you know, get harmed in any way, or to be unsafe by themselves downtown, or how to be protect themselves against sexual predators, or anything like that. We would have new stories now. But these stories were purposeful. They provided teachings. A lot of the stories provided teachings, and so um, there's other stories um, that you can go back to where they talk about the mountains, and they talk about creation stories, and so in those stories, they're talking about our actual land base and they, they tell us where our traditional land was and they tell us the names of those mountains and rivers and, and those places. Um, so on our island um, we have um, one that's called the, the place of many slahalberries 
um, taka. And so we would know by that that our people used to go there and pick slahalberries. And so because that was the name of the area. And so we know also, number one, that we had a name for it, that we used that area, and that would pass information on. So for me now, I know when we go there, that that was a place that we visited all the time in our community. So those stories provide those teachings. They taught us about our culture, they taught us about our tradition, and they provided history for the fact that we used those places. And I think that storytelling Provide, continues to provide these opportunities and so when I teach I do lots of storytelling so rather than talk about um, some of the things from in a book about racism and how racism plays itself out and indicators of racism I'll tell a story about racism in my life I'll tell a story about my children I will tell stories about my family members and and so I, I, I do the the brain part but I do the heart part too because I think that some of these stories need to be shared in a way that they're not an intellectual activity but that they actually provoke those emotions because we remember those emotions and so I have students come back to me after years and say I remember the story about your son on the bus. Now she may not remember or he may not remember the class where we talked about that or what the issue was but she remembered that because that provoked some kind of an emotion that she hadn't forgotten or he hadn't forgotten and so I think I continue to try use storytelling in a really purposeful way and where you provide teaching so now this is about me storytelling and my use of storytelling and how I continue to use that I also think other people use storytelling day to day to talk about their experiences to share things that have happened in their lives and one example that for me is a bit worrisome is the um, Truth and Reconciliation Commission and and they're um, at one point we're proposing to collect stories and to share stories so that the general population in Canada would would hear the stories would know the stories and and would find meaning in the stories and and while I think those stories are really important to share I think there's all kinds of ethical concerns about storytelling and so if I'm encouraging someone to share a story, how do I ensure that they're pr protected when they share that story? So if they are talking about the truth and reconciliation, specifically about residential schools, how do we ensure those people are safe? That emotionally, spiritually, physically and mentally, after they've shared the story, that they're okay, that they, that they land on their feet, that, that they're really healthy and they're ready to move forward, and if not, how are we there to protect them? How are we there to protect them and to move them forward um, to start that healing journey that they need to be on? So, um, so I think about storytelling the way some people want to use it now um, to share stories of historical issues. And then I think about the way that I use storytelling. And, and they can be, so I, I, I always am concerned when we kind of just talk about storytelling in general. And so, you know, when to kind of wrap up some of my thoughts about storytelling is um, they honor our traditions. Many of our people are really, really good orators and, and they don't have a problem speaking and they don't have a problem sharing their stories. Um, they may not feel so comfortable writing those stories down. So, you know, there is, there's also that. It acknowledges that we, we, we come from oral traditions where, where we had stories. You know, I, I've recently been getting stories about wild woman, about wise woman, and, and how she's our mother. She's everyone's mother, and she's all of those things. But wise woman, the one thing about her is that she is there for the children. Um, and that that's her main goal is to protect children and to and to share stories with children and 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 she's the giver of life and the carriers of culture. I'm hearing stories about Raven, the trickster. I'm hearing stories about Raven and mosquito and and all of these stories, but they all teach you something, whether whether or not it's about how we look at the world and how we misinterpret the world or how we can look at the world in a better way whether or not it's teachings about how to be safe, um, whether it's about our history, about our dances, 
they teach us something. And so I think there's lots to be said about storytelling and I think that for many in First Nations people particularly, storytelling offers them an opportunity to share the things that really matter to them. It's just how we take up those stories and how we protect people who choose to share stories um, where my concern comes in and, and particularly around the ethics of, of supporting people in their storytelling process and so while I absolutely love it and embrace it and use storytelling in my work that I do all the time I'm also really conscious and aware that we need to be looking after people in that process and so even in my own work when I'm telling stories and, and sharing stories that have been shared with me I need to make sure that I do that in a really good way and in our language we have a word and to do things with a good mind and a good heart and I think that's central to storytelling is that it has to be done with a good mind and a good heart and it has to be purposeful and it has to be giving back to our community so that storytelling isn't about me getting something it's about everyone getting the best out of that story so that's good <laughs>